Uh, my name is Michael Puna. This is my contact info. You can take a camera phone picture of that uh, if you want, or just uh, talk to me afterwards. I can give you a card. But uh, so I make uh, music hardware, um, which is a lot more difficult than software because it costs you both time and money. Uh, so I got my start doing hardware. Um, I was a musician in high school. I was in a lot of bands. I had this um, delay pedal that um, one of the knobs like just stopped working after a while. It got dodgy for a little bit. Like maybe if you put it in just the right position, it would work, but you could move it beyond that. Uh, and uh, eventually I asked my dad, who had taken some electronics classes, what's going on here? And he started to explain to me a little bit about electronic theory. And so I found that uh, there were actually replacement things you could buy for this with Radio Shack, figured out how to solder, took uh, the potentiometer out, put a new one in, uh, and it worked, but uh, to my surprise, it worked differently than it did before, because it turns out these things have different uh, values, and if you put a different value in than it was before, it will cause an electronic circuit to behave differently, uh, which led me to explore some other uh, ideas. Um, right away, I sort of sold my drum kit and bought a drum machine, uh, because I liked being able to think about music more in the abstract than in real time. Uh, I consider it one of the better decisions I've made financially. Um, uh, I eventually took a uh, Casio keyboard apart. Uh, one of my friends had recommended uh, in, in confidence that, hey, if you take apart a Casio keyboard and stab it with a screwdriver, it'll make some really cool sounds. Uh, I, hearing him say this, I sort of understood what he was telling me was that you could cause incidental connections uh, amongst the circuitry on the inside and uh, make it make some sounds that the uh, original designers hadn't intended. So uh, this led me to uh, what is now called circuit bending. At the time, and this was before a lot of this information was on the internet, I was just a weirdo in uh, my closet uh, working on this stuff. And so I eventually disassembled the Casio keyboard, attached it to a space helmet, uh, with an amplified sound system built into it, and uh, there were sensors sort of on the arms of it and the wrists of it as you like sort of pop and lock your way to generate the sort of squidgy drum beats. Uh, the idea was to pull up in a van to a public space, hop out the back, and then just sort of perform uh, to bewildered crowds of people. Then uh, uh, pop and lock my way to the other side of the park where the van would pick me up again and then like gone. So. Um, <laughs> I, I started exploring other ways to translate um, motion into sound. This is a project I did called Beat Bike. It's a little tough to read, but there are um, magnets attached to the spokes of the bicycle wheel, magnetic switches, that as the wheel rotates around, triggers different events. These can be patched together into a circuit bent drum machine so that as you ride the bicycle, it creates different types of drum beats. And there are controls on it that you can change up the order and pattern on the uh, circuit bending of the sound to create different types of drum sounds. So I had done a lot of these individual projects. Um, each one took a lot of like thought, abstraction, um, and then boiling it down into some kind of like mode of interaction, turning it into a thing, displaying that in some way. Um, and I enjoyed like doing these as sort of one-off projects, art pieces, performance art pieces. But eventually, I got this idea that I was spending a lot of effort on each project, and uh, there, while I could show each of them. They sort of had like a limited range uh, of what I could do with them. So I started trying to think of something I could do that could be repeatable. That I could do it over and over, put it out there, like turning these ideas into like products, basically. Think about uh, like with bands, you know, you play music, you may jam, you may have a lot of musical ideas, but eventually you coalesce those down into songs, you make an album, you record that, you sell it. So that was sort of the angle I was going for with this. So, um, I built a simple optical theremin for a five-year-old nephew and gave it to him for his birthday, uh, just as like trying to be the cool uncle and um, giving him something totally weird that his parents would hate. And uh, it turned out to be that one toy at the little kid's birthday party that all the kids fought over and all the adults hated. It. So I figured out I was on something. So after building that first one, I then built 25 and at an art show uh, with the art collective I was in at the time, uh, offered those up for sale. They were all sort of tacked to the wall, gallery style, and people could buy them and take it off the wall. Um, I figured I'd maybe sell a couple of them and have a couple left over, and they all sold immediately. So I built another 25, put those up online, I started an Etsy shop. Those sold immediately as well. Um, I went through several iterations of the design. Here's one, uh, trying to migrate up to a laser-cut wood case, a 
beloved circuitry is still the same. Uh, and eventually I got tired of building them by hand at around the 250th one. So I uh, got uh, some assistance in the Chicago startup tech scene, started talking to um, overseas manufacturers, and I started getting them manufactured on a larger scale. Um, I created some goofy demo videos to help push this out there, got picked up by a bunch of distributors and um, uh, technology companies that sell gas tree and things like that. And I've done some decent volume on these. Um, a quick demo of what it sounds like. So it's a pretty simple, it's a pretty simple device. It uh, merely responds to the amount of light strip in an optical sensor. So that's basically what it does. You can run it through Echo, you can use a modulating light source to sort of pulse the tones of it. Um, the idea with it is that it's gestural, people can see what you're doing with it, as opposed to most electronic music, which sort of looks like this. So, um, so I'm trying to take things out of the laptop and out of the box and into a way that connects with the audience. Oh, and this slide doesn't look right at all. Um, this is just to mention that. Um, before Kickstarter existed, I got a grant from a, uh, a local startup incubator seed uh, group called Scalewell. They gave $1,000 grants to unique ideas. I was the first recipient of that, and that really helped me get my first manufacturing run uh, going, because it takes a little bit to um, invest in the tooling, circuit board production, etc. So I'm working on a new project. I had this idea of um, wanting to build a, uh, a hardware synthesizer sequencer that uh, did its own synthesis and also communicated in MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, uh, for those kids from the 80s, um, with other drum machines, laptops, other synthesizers, to be interoperable with those, and to have sort of a unique interface. Um, I've played with a lot of sequencers where you save musical notes in and then it plays them back in a quarter, usually in a repeating fashion. This is how a lot of techno is made. Um, and they're very linear. You start at one side and you go towards the end, which is sort of how like Western musical notation works. Like if you draw notes on a staff, it sort of goes like that. But a lot of electronic music is more like cyclical. Things happen in loops. Things happen in like cycles and epicycles. And so I wanted to take that line and sort of curve it around into a circle, so that there's this idea of like motion that's continual rather than linear. So here's a, a bunch of pictures of various prototypes I've built, stretching back maybe. Four years on the earliest one to, this is a couple months ago, on the bottom, a lot of sketches, a lot of prototyping, exploring different ideas. Uh, and this is what the final product's going to look like. Uh, we're going to be launching uh, very shortly. Um, we're going to be doing a Kickstarter to raise funds for the uh, first production run. Uh, we're working with a local band, Gemini Club, who's uh, sort of blowing up a little bit on the uh, synth pop scene. Uh, they've had a lot of input on the interaction and design, uh, because I can think of what I would do with it. But every time I give an instrument to someone else, they give me a lot of great feedback as to what they would do with it. That sort of pushes my mind in different directions. So I feel it's good to have like feedback on this. If you create something in a vacuum, it maybe would be a tool that's good for you, but not good for other people. Um, so I mean, we tried to uh, do some nice things with the aesthetics of it. And if I have 30 seconds left, I'll make some sounds on it. 